Hey, what's up guys? It's TechSumer, talking to you here. And in today's video, I want to talk about something that has flown under the radar from a lot of people lately. And it's the fact that the M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros were delayed. Yes, Mark Kerman talked about in his Twitter account that the M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros would be delayed. And now we are left questioning ourselves. What about the future of these devices? Apple hasn't released those and it were leaked that these devices will be coming out. The new M1 Pro and M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pros are still out, are still new. And we were supposed to get a new version of these devices with the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. But according to Mark Kerman, they were delayed because Apple didn't saw enough effort from the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips to be worth the upgrade. So the two chips were too similar the M1 Pro and M2 Pro, the jump difference was not enough for Apple to justify to upgrade because it would look bad on their lineup. So they postponed those devices. Now, in my opinion, the M2 Pro and M2 Max will, if Apple behaves accordingly to Mark Kerman's leaks, they will be coming with a new three nanometer design. If that happens, oh my God, we gotta talk about it. So if you are excited for that, don't forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. So let's get started. As you know, these devices come with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. These chips derive from the M1. The M1 is a 5 nanometer architecture based on the A14 chip. These devices are also based on the A14 chip, of course. So people were expecting Apple to release the A15 chip based course. But no, the M2 chip on the M2 MacBook Air that I actually reviewed on this summer in 2022, that chip was more of an overclocked M1 chip not a new M2 chip, so it was more of an M1S, an overclocked chip which can give you a little bit more power and essentially more GPU power. CPU power was kind of dull, like 10% in single core, 15 or 20% on multi-core, but the main gain and the main jump was on GPU power, which was about 35%. But on the M1 chip, that's actually very good because the GPUs there weren't that great. But on the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, the GPUs here are insane. And how good can you make the GPU here that has 32 cores while overclocking it? The thing is, you can't. The diminishing returns will act in that way. And you have seen that on the M1 Ultra, which is an even bigger and better version and overclocked version of the M1 Max. And as you can see, the differences between these two chips in terms of real performance is not that much. It's kind of disappointing, actually, when you see the M1 Ultra results. So in my opinion, Apple did well by scrapping these M2 Pro and M2 Max Again, take these leaks with a huge grain of salt. They might end up happening this November, but I don't see Apple releasing them. It doesn't make any much sense for Apple to release new MacBook Pros with the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. Well, the only difference will be slight performance jumps and Apple will have to comply with a new chip and have to send review units to YouTubers and then all of this press release stuff that doesn't make that much sense. While the three nanometer chips and architecture is ready for the beginning of 2023, according to TSMC. So why will Apple completely bow out all of their fireworks six months before the new nanometer? It doesn't make any much sense. And that's why I believe Markham's report. I do believe we are getting the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips mainly on spring with the new M2 Pro and M2 Max chip with the new MacBook Pros. It will be keeping the same design again, just like the quoted scrapped MacBook Pros, but again, the chips will be much better. I expect on those chips a huge jump in efficiency and of course a huge jump in performance. Let's just say that maybe we are getting 25 to 30% more performance on CPU and GPU while reducing efficiency by 20%. So that would be cool. That would be amazing. And these new 3 nanometer chips will be the first of their kind. Of course, Apple will release the A17 chip next year with the new 3 nanometer architecture. And then this 3 nanometer architecture could be the baseline version for the Mac Pro. So I'm very, very excited. Let's see how Apple can behave with the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. Of course, I do not expect Apple to, for example, pick up these MacBooks and say, okay, let's scrap the design because we have a more efficient chip. We don't need as a bulky design as this one. Now we just need a little bit thinner design. I don't see Apple changing the design, but I do see Apple, for example, upgrading the HDMI port that this device has. It has an HDMI right here, and this HDMI is only 2.0. With the new M2 Pro and M2 Max, Apple could maybe, please Apple do this, put 2.1. By putting HDMI 2.1, we will support 
120 frames per second on 4 and 5K monitors. So finally, Apple could release a new monitor with 5K and ProMotion technology. That would be very, very exciting. It will kind of become a bummer because that would mean that these 2021 Macro Pros with a very, very powerful chip wouldn't support the, the new display. That would be dumb. But that could be something that Apple will say it's a trade-off. Okay, the M2 Pro and M2 Max main advantages will be efficiency and not high performance. But I do believe while being a very high performance chip, you will notice some differences like 20, 25%. Like I told you, the main focus of these devices is an iterative jump, not a revolution, because Apple revolutionized the industry with this generation of the Macro Pros. Now, they just need to iterate it. They do not want to revolutionize it again, just because next year or two years from now, they won't have anything to do with. I do not expect Apple to have Face ID. I do not expect Apple to change the design. I do not expect Apple to change one single thing about the hardware here, just the CPU. Maybe they add a version of 128 gigabytes of RAM. Maybe not. The thing about these M2 Pro and M2 Max chips is the fact that we might expect some slight bump on the number of cores. And so that might expect some slight bump in the number of RAM. So maybe now we have 64, expect maybe, I don't know, 64 plus 32. So yeah, 96 gigabytes of RAM. Maybe, maybe that will be an option. Maybe more RAM will be an option. Maybe more storage, like instead of eight terabytes, 12 terabytes, I don't know, something like that. The only thing about this is like, these computers are still very good. I don't see where Apple can improve them that much, but I can see the fact that the display, the keyboard, the trackpad, the new design, the new battery, all of this is set and stoned. Apple just needs to bring a new and very powerful M2 Pro and M2 Max chips, which will, in terms of optimization, optimize more this design, make it more powerful, make it even better and long lasting battery life and make it essentially completely silent. So I'm very, very excited for these M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. This will revolutionize the computer industry. And of course, it will revolutionize the Mac lineup because in my opinion, it will introduce the basis for the Mac Pro, the Apple Silicon Mac Pro. And for that computer, I'm so, so excited. So if you are excited too, don't forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys for all the support on the latest videos. It has been incredible. I love you guys. It has been an incredible journey making videos for you. So, this has been Tex, we're talking to you here.